here it is, September 6th, 2018. The 6th of September, in other words. Um, and I'm embarking on another trip. Once again on the Metro Rail commuter from my outlying suburban area into the city of Chicago to catch my Amtrak train, the first of four trains that I'll be taking on this trip. Only the first train of the four will be a long distance train, the others will be regional commuter trains or uh, just regional trains. So uh, it's going to be like a mini train odyssey. And uh, I'll talk in more detail about it once we actually get going on that, but um, I'll do a little bit of the footage heading down there. considerably later than I go down um, to the city because the uh, long distance Amtrak train is the Lakeshore Limited which does not leave Chicago until 9.30 at night. So uh, I'm actually heading down here during rush hour and I'll still have uh, at least three hours sitting around Union Station uh, before it's time to board my long distance train. Uh, the Metro Rail does not run a uh, commuter train out here very often to my location, so uh, it only runs every two or three hours, um, except for the most peak periods. Um, so it actually has more trains running out from the city this time of day, and fewer running back. They, I think they just eyeball their way back. I'm um, not really sure how they do that, but um, this was the only one that was even remotely close to the right schedule. train robbery. where several different rail lines coming from different directions all merge and cross each other. between Lake County and Cook County.
So the Great Hall is still under construction. Obviously a lot of stuff has been done, but it's nowhere near complete. Time to get some dinner. Going from the lower level up to the mezzanine level where the food courts are. Two down escalators, no up escalator. north on the Chicago River. That was south. so much time to kill before my train leaves tonight. There's time to leave the station and go to a proper restaurant for dinner. here cross street is famous Wacker Drive which is a dual level this obviously is the upper level
And unless I totally screwed up the history, many people outside of Chicago don't realize that at one point, most of the downtown was one story lower than it is now. And it was decided at one point to build it up. So, uh, the current downtown street level is one level higher than it would have been historically. So all the buildings around here have an additional one or two levels of basement below where you think they would down to reach down to the original uh, original basements of the buildings. Well, of course, as it turns out, the Panera Bread I thought I was going to is closed. And this is heading back over by the Chicago River, facing west. And this fifth, third center small skyscraper. And the adjacent building there, the relatively low one. Those are the buildings that are upstairs from Union Station, of course, the classic Union Station is there, but that's where the Grand Hall is. The trains aren't there. The station where most everything happens is under these two buildings here. And then the tracks are under the street at the original Chicago ground level, or original Chicago street level. And they're right along the side of the river there. So all the way down there for a couple of blocks at least. And you can see the sure when the street level was raised in Chicago and whether it actually did take place uh, on the west side of the river or just on the east and if uh, Union Station was there before they raised it I'm not sure of the timeline but it does um, seem like perhaps at one point that may have been street level I'm not sure and the same thing happens on the other side that the uh, tracks are one level below street level. Well, there's a pot belly here. It's a double decker pot bellies. Some of my train trip viewers have chastised me in the past for not showing meals, which I don't personally see the appeal of, but um, and this isn't a train meal, but here's a meal. Pot Belly's new pulled pork sandwich and some salt and vinegar chips.
This is the store I always go into to get snacks for the trip. Go down from the food level mezzanine to the south concourse. And that doorway over there is the door that the Metropolitan Lounge uses for passengers exiting to the trains. It's a nice Amtrak route map. People who have seen my other videos will recognize the Empire Builder which goes this way. And then either uh, at Spokane splits to go to Seattle or Portland. I've done videos on both of those routes. And then the Coast Starlight, which comes down the coast here, all the way to Los Angeles. And then the uh, Texas Eagle and uh, Sunset Limited combined trains are on this route down to San Antonio where you've got the train coming in from New Orleans and then the Texas Eagle that goes up through Austin to Fort Worth east through Dallas and then up through Arkansas eastern Missouri and then diagonally through Illinois to Chicago and then the California Zephyr which goes down this way as far as Galesburg and you can see everything seems to go into Galesburg then it continues west through Burlington through southern Iowa southern Nebraska northern Colorado through Denver up through the Rocky Mountains right there and then down through Glenwood Springs, uh, goes into Utah, goes back up north to Salt Lake City, crosses the Great Salt Lake uh, Plain there, and then through uh, Nevada, and then finally through the Sierra Nevada Mountains, and then down through Sacramento to Emeryville, just on the east side of the San Francisco Bay with shuttle service over to San Francisco. And uh, then we also have the Southwest Chief, which comes out of Los Angeles more to the east, and uh, goes up through Barstow, goes through, through Needles and Kingman, Flagstaff, Albuquerque, uh, up into southern Colorado, cuts the corner, goes through Kansas, 
diagonally through northern Missouri and then joins up at Galesburg and continues up to Chicago. These are all routes that I have videos on. And I've also done a video on the uh, Cardinal, which comes down from Chicago through Indianapolis, Cincinnati, along the border of Kentucky, through uh, West Virginia following uh, the New River mostly, and then uh, up through the Appalachians, and then along through uh, Western Virginia, and up to Washington DC, and continuing I think as far as New York City. And I've also taken the Eastern Corridor train, um, which comes from further north, but I've picked it up at Washington DC and taken it down as far as Petersburg. Now on this trip, which I haven't really discussed so far, I'll be doing a mini train odyssey. Uh, mini meaning it's not that long, but it does involve multiple trains, hence I'm calling it a train odyssey. I'll be coming out of Chicago on the Lakeshore Limited, which is an overnight train, leaving Chicago at 9 30 tonight, and then it spends the rest of the night crossing northern Indiana and most of northern Ohio sometime around 6 in the morning when I should be awake already. It'll be in Cleveland. At that point, it um, continues up the shore of Lake Erie to Buffalo, and then it cuts across central New York. Um, and I'm taking it as far as Albany Rensselaer, right there in the middle of the screen. And that's as far as I'm taking it, but it does continue. Um, I think it goes down to New York, but maybe it's Boston, I forget. One or the other, other it goes that far, but I'm getting off early at Albany. Then the second leg will be uh, this run right down here. To New York City and then the third leg will be a run um, from New York down to Philadelphia and then the fourth run will be another one of the um, coastal uh, commuter type routes uh, that'll go from Philadelphia all the way down to Petersburg so that'll be the fourth leg and then I'm not taking a train home, it's just going to be flying home. Curiously enough, I can't find a non-stop, so I have to fly from, from Richmond up to uh, Dulles Airport in D.C. and then continue uh, back to Chicago. Well, it's now 7.20, so I have another hour and 20 minutes to wait before we start boarding. Here's an interesting development. Our departure of our Lakeshore Limited train has been delayed about half an hour, but apparently the Metropolitan Lounge has to close at 9 o'clock. Presumably the staff goes home or something at that time. Uh, so they kicked us all out and we relocated to a more general lounge. Once again, there will be a brief delay in the boarding of train 48. 
So anyway, they've got the general lounge just on the other side of that wall there. Finally at 9.25, get to board the train. because the numbers on the sleeper cars at the tail end don't seem to be anything like the ones we're supposed to have and nobody's telling us where to go so we're walking down to this end. So they've got the sleeper cars scattered throughout the length of the train depending on where you're going. It's a new experience for me. Maybe they drop some cars off at different points along the route or something, but my car is apparently way up at the front. A, which is right here, but before that, we have the usual roomettes down that way, and this is, after all, a view liner car, not my usual super liner car. So here we are in a viewliner bedroom. 
the full-size bedroom, not to be confused with the roomettes. On my video on the Cardinal, I covered the Viewliner roomette. So this will be the first time I've covered a Viewliner room. And uh, I've never taken a Superliner room. So uh, this is the first time I've got a video on any kind of bedroom where I've actually been in it. Um, I haven't covered every trip I've taken in various accommodations on YouTube, so this is a little bit of a new one for me as far as the video goes. So I'll do the Viewliner Roomette tour. Unlike the uh, Superliner, which is a double-decker car, the Viewliner is a single-level car, but it can be fairly tall, so it has a lot more headroom in the room than the Superliner can, having to squeeze two levels into one very tall car. So you do end up with these upper-level windows on the Viewliner if you're in a sleeper car, if you're in a coach car or any of the other cars, then the, the roofs are lower and you don't have that upper level window. You get the same big picture glass or uh, what's the word I want? Big picture window uh, that you would get on a, a super liner. And the rooms are all pretty much about six and a half feet wide. This is a room that could be part of a suite, so it has the adjoining door there. But on this uh, instance, I've just got the room by myself. So there's only one uh, single seat in the car and it actually can fold up. Like this to get it out of the way of the adjoining door. Have to push on the little pedal to unlock it. And you can see that it's not nearly as nice as the single seats in a Superliner um, roomette or even a Viewliner roomette. It doesn't have that much back support. The seat is narrow and really not that great, but serviceable. Sitting in it, it's like a very uncomfortable airline seat. Um, I'm hoping that I can tolerate sitting in this for hours on end. So, um, as usual, I have a automotive GPS stuck on the window with a suction mount and my radio scanner um, programmed to the frequencies obtained off of OnTrack online website for this Lakeshore Limited train. Right now there's no communications going on. I presume they'll start once we start rolling. And I usually I have my outlet strip. Now here's the difference on the uh, Superliner cars for certain, the outlets are all over by the window. On this Viewliner room, the only outlet in the room is this one over by the sink. So I bought a non-grounded type out, um, extension cord. I believe it's a 16 foot, 15 or 16 foot cord. I have to run it across the doorway. There's no other way to get it where it needs to go and run it under the the uh, sofa seat, which is actually the bed once it gets converted. Good morning, sleeping car passengers. This is your attendant, Natalie. Also, just one reminder, before you go to sleep this evening, please set your watches one hour ahead. When we arrive into our first station stop of Southland, Indiana, we'll be at Eastern Time. Thank you. Anyway, um, so the room is obviously not made up for nighttime yet, even though it's almost 10 o'clock at night. And we should have started rolling at 9.30, but we're still here in Union Station. Anyway, uh, it's pretty much the normal thing. It has the pull-up tray, which will fold down here and can be used by facing passengers, either for meals or for uh, setting your iPad or your book or your notebook computer or whatever on it, or playing small board games like checkers or chess. 
you've got your uh, air vents here where they shut off valve that admits the air in. There's two of those each with their own. Um, the upper bit is here with this lever to unlock it. I'm not going to do that yet. Each of the uh, the bench seats here has a swivelable light. which can be turned on and off with a button. The night light um, and ceiling light is controlled here, off, night light only, and full on. And that's controllable from these two locations. There doesn't appear to be a control for it over by this seat. And then there's a switch here, which also cycles through them. So three places to control the light from. There is a small mirror with its own light. Uh, and there's a reading light over the bucket seat not terribly bright looking. And here's a small enhancement. I've started to bring this product on my train trips. It's about a $25 light with a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. Comes with a AC charger and a car charger. Has a, a, um, a folding hook hanger and a spring clip and a neodymium magnet base. It's nice and bright and it's also dimmable. So the radio is making it sound like we're about ready to roll here. Oh, there's uh, buttons for the wall light here, high, low, and off. So I get rid of a little bit of the glare. There's the attendant call button. There's a thermostat. Uh, there's a fan here, which can be set to low, medium, and high. Back to off. Let's see, is there an equivalent one? It appears that that's the only one in this room. I seem to remember that the Viewliner roommates had two or three fans like that. Anyway, uh, there is a closet here, very similar to the ones in the other types of rooms, about the same size. You've got your sliding door out to the aisle with the same type of lock that are on all the Amtrak sleeper rooms. You've got your privacy curtain. There is a cubby hole up here, which you have to stand on the couch to get up to, but there is quite a bit of room up here for a uh, suitcase or two or other bags. And also up here above the shower room. So, the sink is very much like a airline type, almost identical. Little uh, paper cups, uh, there's so-called ice water, which um, isn't doing diddly here. I'm not sure that works. Hot and cold water, under quite a bit of pressure. <laughs> uh, the complimentary washcloths. Um, where did I just see them? Oh, yes. I need to move my suitcase. And here's a thing. There doesn't seem to be as much usable storage space for my carry-on suitcase as there is in even a roomette. Uh, all the roomettes I've been in have a place where you can stick the suitcase, which is out of the way and doesn't have to be constantly moved. But, uh, 
If I put anything here, it blocks the door. If I put it here, it blocks the bathroom. If I put it here, it's in the way of the legs. So no really good place to do it. Somebody's jammed a, uh, <laughs> a washcloth into the sliding door here, probably to cut down on rattling. Anyway, this is the entrance into the shower room toilet, which is barely accessible without folding the chair up, another downside. But you can at least fold that armrest up and get it to open a few more degrees. So there is your own toilet. This one looks like it needed to be flushed. And still has some urine in it. That's really weird. It makes me wonder if they cleaned the thing since it was last used. I'm going to have to clean that myself before I start using it. The towels are up here. The shower is here on its flexible hose. And uh, the uh, toilet paper is in these little tiny pouches here under this supposedly waterproof door. I'm going to have to figure out if they've put additional toilet paper things in here. And the train is starting to move at 10 o'clock, so half an hour late. Let's see if I can turn the room light off entirely. This will be the very first time that I've been shooting train videos where I've left a station at night. So a nighttime departure is a new one for me on these videos. So uh, while I'm sitting here in the dark, this is the Amtrak Lakeshore Limited and it goes um, out uh, from Chicago and goes across northern Indiana and then across um, northern Ohio to Cleveland and it follows then up along the south shore of Lake Erie. Good evening, Erie. Keeping car passengers. This is your attendant, Natalie. For those of you who would like to have your alcoholic beverage, you can go ahead and your head to the cafe car that's one car back or if you want to check out the sleeper lounge that's towards the rear of the train. Again, breakfast will be served in the sleeper lounge from 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Again, on Eastern Time, so please set your watches one hour ahead. Again, we'll be arriving to South Bend, Indiana. We'll be on Eastern Time. That's our first station stop. <laughs> also, quiet hours are between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. You will not hear any announcements unless there is an emergency. Thank you. I'm glad she clarified that because I find on most trains I'm on they don't mention the quiet hours at all. Anyway, so the train uh, continues along the south shore of Lake Erie. It goes through Buffalo, New York, and then it cuts right across the middle of New York State uh, from west to east and uh, makes a couple of stops along the way. Um, one of the major stops is over towards the more eastern end of the state where it goes uh, to Albany, New York. And from there it continues on. And um, I still don't remember where it goes to, if it's Boston or New York City. I wanted to say New York City. Um, but I'm getting off this train in Albany which will also make it the first time I've done a YouTube train video where I'm not taking the train all the way from one end to the other, where I'm getting off at an intermediate point. So I usually go to bed about 9.30 on trains um, because I get up pretty early. There's not much to do after it gets dark. 
usually I don't find it's bright enough to read very much and once the scenery goes away I lose interest in staying awake. So I really should be hitting the sack here pretty close pretty soon but I think I'll stay awake at least until we get into Indiana you know out of the immediate Chicago area because there should be some scenery at least some lights going down through the industrial area south uh, and southeast of the city of Chicago um, I don't know the exact route the rails take but if it goes anywhere near Gary for example there should be steel mills and other stuff that might be worth shooting some video of. So from the GPS we're just passing through a rail yard south of Union Station and right along the Chicago River. It's the same rail yard all the southbound trains go through. This is uh, Amtrak's uh, service area for the trains. I believe this is where they clean the cars between trips and possibly service locomotives and other things like that. Anyway, I'd started, before the train rolled, I'd started my exploration to see where they keep more toilet paper, since it doesn't look like it takes normal toilet paper. I was going to reinvestigate in here. By the way, there's this waterproof lip here, which is real easy to trip over. I've almost done it twice so far. So, anyway, I was saying that because of the waterproof situation, they give you these little coreless packs of toilet paper. And there's two of them in here. That's probably enough. But uh, I would think they would still have some spares. Um, I also don't know if you can turn the lights off in this thing. I don't see any light switches. I wonder if they... They don't turn off with the mirror light. They don't turn off with the... Uh, room light so I guess they just stay on all night How about that shooting out of here. Oh yeah, I was going to say, there is a trash container, it's under the sink. For some reason they put up... That's really weird. It's kind of awkward, they did the way they did the plastic bag here. Tissues. That's disposal of tissues. I guess I might as well go ahead and lower the upper bunk. And uh, as usual with these, it has a safety strap. Um, and there's a ladder. Which, uh, there's only one place it can go because it can't go in this little aisle here. It slopes too much, it wouldn't fit. So it pretty much has to go here. Which also means you can't put any luggage to speak of down here. And you pretty much need to fold that seat up. Otherwise you're gonna hit the front of the seat when you come down the ladder. And if you had people in here at night and they wanna to go to the bathroom, um, you don't want your luggage there either because you're going to have to be moving it in the middle. That's one of the reasons why I almost never stay in bedrooms in Amtrak sleeper cars. Because really all you get for it is a little tiny sink, 
and a toilet, which you might use a, two or three times a day. And you pay at least twice as much for the room. And you're going to have the extra smells and so on in the room that you wouldn't have if you use the toilet down the hallway. That's the experience you have if you've got a roomette um, in, a, in a super liner. Um, and it doesn't seem like the layout is really that much better. Like I said, if you want to sit in this car and be facing in the direction of travel, as I do, this is my only choice. And it's this crummy little seat, very uncomfortable seat. Um, I'm glad that they don't use these cars on the western trips to take three or four days. It'd be miserable. But as it is, I'm going to be in it for maybe six or so hours out of tomorrow, which is okay. Um, the seat that you get, let's see, yeah, the seats that you get if you're on the bench seat uh, are closer to the comfort level you would have in a normal roomette seat, whether view liner or super liner. So that would be the one I'd want to sit in, except for in this car it's going, it's facing the wrong direction. Um, I didn't mention a couple other things besides the ladder and the the two mattresses that are up here, the one for the upper bunk and then the folded mattress which will get put down on the bench seat to make the lower bed. Um, the upper bunk does have the usual amenities. It has its own fan for up there, which it appears... Nope. It is not controlled by the fan control downstairs, so it has its own controls. And there's the little uh, pouch up there where you can put glasses and wallets and things like that at night. And there is a set of controls. I said before there were three controls for the lights. There's actually four because there's the one there located by the upper bunk. And then of course it's reading light up there. So, I think I've covered most of everything about the Viewliner bedroom. And I can't wait for my room attendant to almost trip over the cord laying across there. I hope that doesn't bother her. As soon as she comes around, I'm going to have her make this up for nighttime. And as usual on these trains, I brought my Rand McNally Road Atlas because it's the easiest way to figure out where I am and see the surrounding area, not just a point area like the GPS would show me. And I brought my usual bag of snacks from the convenience store in Union Station. Some soft drinks and some chips and a couple of candy items just for snacking while bored. So I think I'm going to go back to trying to shoot out the window now. Here's a uh, word of caution. This probably applies to both Viewliner and Superliner sleeper cars. Um, and also hotels that have uh, adjacent rooms set up as a suite. I always find that those doors are not very soundproof. And um, sure enough, I can hear a lot of noise from the adjacent room. That would be room B here. Room B. Um, I hope they're not bothered by, by my radio and stuff like that. This is a U.S. Cellular Field. I think that's the name of it. Not sure it's going to light up too well. Let's 
it's not going to show up in the darkness, but there's a big stadium right there. And you can see the little sign right in the middle of the picture that says home of the Chicago White Sox. And uh, this is part of the parking lot here. So that shows up right here. We're still paralleling Highway 90, which in the local Chicago area is known as the Dan Ryan Expressway. We're only going about 22 miles an hour crawling through here. Oh, we're accelerating now. We're already up to about 30 miles an hour. And it looks like our train's finally going to turn from the straight south track and cross under or over presumably under the Dan Ryan Expressway I-90 Alright, so we're curving here starting to cross the roads of the diagonal like we're going over the Dan Ryan Expressway here. Yep, there it is. And now we join a cluster of tracks east side of the Dan Ryan. I'm going to presume that this is about the same place as the Chicago Skyway separates because uh, actually it's not just I-90, it's I-90 and I-94 that comprise the Dan Ryan Expressway to this point. But uh, I want to say it's I-94 that keeps going south while the Skyway I-90 branches off to the east and follows the lake shore more closely. And I think we're going to be kind of right along that it looks like. Big industrial area. That looks like the um, beginning of the Chicago Skyway right there with the traffic going on it. Hard to get a picture here with all the light. I'm just gonna look. So we're up to about 70 miles an hour almost, paralleling the Chicago Skyway. While it's still pretty low to the ground, it hasn't gone up um, in the air yet to cross over. What is it it crosses over? I don't really know this part of the city that well. Is it Lake Calumet? I think that maybe is what it is. Anyway, all the big ship channels and things like that that are down in that area. I take the Skyway fairly often whenever I have to go to Indiana or points east in my car, but uh, this will be the first time I've gone along it in the train. On this trip I brought an actual hard-covered book instead of my usual Kindle. I received it in the mail just, just today. Five one one point zero. Track to no X. Gonna roll my 
Anyway, I was saying I just received this book in the mail today. I just ordered a couple of days ago from Amazon. And this is a new or almost new book called Space Odyssey by Michael Benson, published by Simon & Schuster. This is uh, published, I think, more or less in honor or in commemoration of the 50th, I think it's the 50th anniversary of 2001 A Space Odyssey, and it tells the story of the making of the movie and the writing of the novel. Collaborative effort between Arthur C. Clarke and Stanley Kubrick. And it got really good reviews. And I decided this would be a perfect book to take with me on this trip. But as you can see here, it's not super bright. This is the best that reading light can give me. And I have trouble reading when it's only this bright. Which is exactly why... I brought my auxiliary light. Yeah, we're going right through that area where the, the Skyway Bridge is a really tall bridge at this point. I don't know if we'll see any of it on this side. Oh yeah, really hard to see. But you might be able to see the uh, truck lights up there. And just up there you can see where it's a taller bridge. It's starting to come down the ramp already. It was taller off there to the right. It's a pretty high bridge actually. I suppose that's why they call it the Skyway. I always like the view of myself going over there, even though it's a toll road and you have to pay a fairly steep toll to go over it. Anyway, so we're coming up really close to Lake Michigan here. Not that we're going to be able to see any of it. And the GPS shows that we're just about ready to cross into Indiana. That's where the dotted line is there in the middle of the screen. I imagine the front of the train may already be in Indiana. In Indiana. Can't see diddly out here. It's very dark. And other than some sort of waste yard or something that's off to the side here, a bunch of grain bins or something, I can't quite make out what's out there. But we just crossed into Indiana at this point. Nothing the camera will pick up. There's a uh, casino or something over here. That's why there's some lights. So my room was just made up. And here's what it looks like with the, the lower bunk down. It is wide enough to probably fit two people if you sleep really close to each other. Or you could have maybe a couple of kids sleeping here and an adult on the upper bunk or something. But look how much room it takes up. It's almost impossible to get to the door or access the sink or anything. So I scooch through here. Awkwardly. And uh, I really don't need about 20 zillion pillows. I'm going to stick those back up in the top. OK. 
Okay, that's more like it. So, uh, since I mentioned before I wasn't sure of the route, once it gets east of Albany, here is the route. Okay, so Chicago goes to South Bend, Indiana, Elkhart, Indiana, Waterloo, Indiana, then Bryan, Toledo, Sandusky, Illyria, and Cleveland, Ohio, Erie, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York, Rochester, Syracuse, Utica, Schenectady, and Alb Albany, Rensselaer, which is where I'm getting off, then into Pittsfield, Massachusetts, Springfield, Massachusetts, Worcester, Massachusetts, Framington, Massachusetts, and then to Boston, and then down to Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, Croton Harmon, New York, Boston, Massachusetts, South Station. That's weird. How does it do that? Oh, um, okay. So I guess Poughkeepsie and Croton Harmon. It seems to hit Boston twice. Not sure how that's set up exactly, but. Um, and then finally, New York, Penn Station. So I was right that it goes to Boston and goes to New York. Another thing I don't like about uh, is this incessant banging from the partition door. <coughs> I'm going to see if I can dampen that out a little bit with my suitcase. That might work. And I'd said before that there was no separate light switch for the shower or bathroom, but there is. It's right here. The shower light. Well, this is what the bedroom looks like with the lights turned off and ready for bed. I have to have everything piled up over in that corner to keep the path open to the bathroom. And the rest of the room is pretty much inaccessible to everything. Now, if you had the upper bunk down, the ladder would be taking up all that space down there, so there'd be essentially no floor space that's accessible at night, which is in many ways even worse or less space than you'd have in a roomette. Yet another reason why I don't see why people really want to pay all the extra money for a bedroom. So, at uh, 11.25 Central Time, I'm hitting the sack. I'm not sure this is really any more comfortable either than, than a roomette. The bed's wider, of course, but that doesn't do anything for me. And as usual with the rooms or roomettes on Amtrak trains, for some reason, I always find them kind of too warm when I go to sleep, even with the thermostat turned all the way down. It's not like it's stiflingly hot, but always warmer than I would like it. Um, but it usually gets cooler overnight, and then it gets a little more comfortable. It's about 7.15 in the morning, that's uh, Eastern Time. I did not get up early, um, as I usually do on the train, because a big part of my reason for getting up early is to grab the shower before everybody else gets that idea. And I have my own shower this time, so there wasn't that need. Plus it was very gray and dark. Uh, I decided to stay in bed <laughs> until now. 
Um, we went through Cleveland just a little while ago. And we're now uh, rapidly approaching the, the border. We're in between Mentor and Ashtabula. Very close to the shore of Lake Erie. I think the little town we just went past was North Madison. So with Cleveland being here, North Madison is here, and uh, we're just a little bit east of it, but we're not to Ashtabula yet. It should be here. I think we're right around about Geneva, so quite close to the Pennsylvania state line. Well, the shower wasn't bad, but it's so constrictive in there, it's hard to move. I think I much prefer the much larger shower in the so-called public shower in each sleeper car that I could have actually used on this train if I'd wanted to instead of using this one. Um, and of course you got to make sure to stow your toilet paper first or it'll get all soaking wet. And the uh, even the toilet, the it doesn't maybe look it, but the uh, <laughs> you can't even move your arms out to the sides of your body because this is such a narrow space. This is even smaller than a an airline toilet. Uh, just very little room to move or maneuver in there. And if you're standing in the shower, you're wedged in between the edge of the toilet seat and the door. And again, it's not even any room to move really. So. Again, I, I question the, the merit of having a shower and toilet in the room. It seems like it's hardly worth the hassle, really. And we're just now crossing into Pennsylvania. at 7.50, just about. Um, we're just a little ways inside Pennsylvania, and according to the GPS, we're right along the edge of Lake Erie, but you can't see it. We keep waiting for a break in the trees. You get the impression that there will be a sudden break in the trees and they'll see the light, but uh, there's always that other row of trees that stands between us and the lake.
upper level. apparently Lake City. At least that's what it said on the fire station. GPS isn't showing a town there. Shows us being near Girard. Maybe it's unincorporated. Oh, there it is. Zoom in a little bit more. It was Lake City. said that uh, breakfast is somewhere near the rear of the train. Excuse me? It, it, it. I'm sorry. I thought I just bumped into a chair. I didn't oh, realize yeah, I it was you. I'm sorry. Pretty strong.
just returned from the dining car at the opposite end of the train. Uh, it's about 8.40 in the morning, Eastern Time. And uh, we're in between Portland and Brockton. I guess that's still Pennsylvania. I have to check. Well, so when I went to the dining car. We just recently crossed from Ohio into Pennsylvania and while I was eating we were in Erie and we've gone up here and crossed into New York State. And we are Off of my GPS here, let's see. We just passed Brockton, which is right here. Oops. Can't seem to stabilize it. So we've gone that little distance. And we're heading up towards Buffalo. And then The rest of the, the day, as far as I'm concerned, will be going along past Rochester, 
Syracuse, Utica, and down to Schenectady and Albany, which is where I get off. And I'm going to stay overnight and then take a scenic drive to Ticonderoga, which is way up here. So then tomorrow, later afternoon, I'm going to come back from Ticonderoga to Albany and catch the train on to New York City and then on to Philadelphia. Unfortunately, there's a lot of spots on my window on the outside. The inside was actually pretty clean when I wiped it down as soon as I got into the car. It came up almost perfectly clean on my cleaning rag. And uh, so somebody in the car was actually wiping that down, but the outside's pretty dirty. I don't get the impression they really cleaned it before the trip started. Just because it's got that much dirt on it. So some commentary on overnight. Uh, I actually slept pretty well. Um, the tracks uh, on that stretch uh, through Ohio, Indiana, and then Ohio um, were surprisingly smooth, except for a few spots that I noticed when I was awake, but by and large, uh, there were many times when I woke up to just roll over or something that uh, the tracks were so smooth I thought we'd stopped. Uh, almost all of the western routes I've taken on long-distance Amtrak trains in the last few years have been fairly rough, at least in places. So it was a pleasant surprise to find that whoever's owning the rails and maintaining them in that stretch seemed to have done a pretty good job. It's not so smooth today though. Um, for about the last hour it's been a little rougher but still fairly, fairly reasonable. Certainly not a lot of jolting, just occasional little bounces and things. Dunkirk, which is again right on the lake. I have yet to see a view of the lake. scanner turned down when I went to eat and I forgot to turn it back up. Track 48. So I know it's going to seem like I'm harping on this, but I'm going to say it again hopefully for the last time. <laughs> this is the second time in my travels that I've stayed in a full-size room on a sleeper car. The first time made me think I was never going to do it again. It just wasn't even remotely worth the extra price for what you get and um, last night reconfirmed that opinion Not only did I not think it was even remotely worth the extra money, it didn't really provide any extra amenities or anything that were worth anything to me. And indeed, some of the things like the use of the bathroom and the shower were really less convenient and less comfortable and just more of a pain than um, they would have been if I just used the 
the the more public ones and you know I hate to use the word public for that because it's not like a public toilet you're sharing a common toilet with a handful of people when you're on a sleeper car you're not letting everybody in the second cousin come into it and the same thing with the shower you know there's a real small number of people using it and uh, most of the time it's available and it's certainly a lot bigger and easier to use the the communal one maybe you want to call it um, I just don't see myself uh, hankering to get another room any time in the foreseeable future um, and you may ask why did I get one on this trip well it wasn't my intention to do so I, I did have a bit of a thought in the back of my head that it might be nice to do a video on one, but I don't think I would have paid extra just to do that. The, the truth of the matter is that um, I booked this trip fairly late, didn't get my vacation act together very long before this trip, and by the time I booked there were no sleeper accommodations of any sort. Originally I was going to leave Chicago today and uh, there were no sleeper accommodations of any sort on Friday's departing train. Uh, so I had to move the trip up by one day and even then on this train the only room that was available still on the entire train was this one. Uh, there were no more rooms, there were no roomettes this was my last chance to get any kind of sleeper accommodation on this train. So I had to pony up the money. And then I justified it by saying, well, at least I'll get a video out of it. We'll cut down a few of these trees and we might be able to see the lake. The train is apparently running nearly two hours late. We left half an hour late last night and they were guessing that we'd be able to make up some of that, but it seems like we lost time. Uh, the schedule that I saw said we were supposed to be in Cleveland around 5.30 in the morning and my sleeping car attendant repeated that information last night. But in fact, it was more like 7.15 this morning that we were in Cleveland. So, um, at least by my watch. Now, as far as I know, all of Ohio is on Eastern Time, so I don't think there was a confusion there. I think we must have had some slower traffic or slower speeds overnight or longer stays in a couple of stations or something. But at least some of the clouds are boiled off and looks like we'll have a pleasant day at least for a while. Man, these trees uh, just don't get much of a break. There seem to be a lot of vineyards around here. So at 8.53, we're rapidly approaching Silver Creek, and that's probably this town here. easy to get the impression looking at the maps when a train route goes along a lake or a river that you're going to be able to see the lake or the river. 
not necessarily true. Just as with the roomettes, uh, at least the seats are close enough, uh, the facing seats are close enough that if you're inclined to put your legs up, the distance is not too great. It's about 9 a.m. and our room attendant just came on the PA to say that Buffalo was about half an hour away but that we were only running about 45 minutes late. And she pointed out that even though one would seem to think that we're later than that because of built-in delays put into the schedule, um, presumably where we would stop for longer periods at some stations, um, we've made up some of that and we're only about 45 minutes behind at this point. At 9.06 this is the town of Derby, New York State. hearing the automated track announcements but I haven't been able to clearly make out what they're saying in some cases especially identifying the railroad and I was also commenting earlier about um, whoever is maintaining these tracks seems to have done a, a better job than the preponderance of ones going west from Chicago so I looked it up and it's CSX I could tell it was something SX or FX, and it's CSX, and they run tracks mostly in this pattern here. Training at Buffalo as well. Thank you. I was fumbling around with my camera and didn't get it going quick enough to uh, record all the... Ladies and gentlemen, go down and train traffic. will be now Buffalo. Buffalo Creek Station Project come in. Well, that was a mealy-mouthed announcement. Hey, Buffalo Station Project. Now, look around your seat. I'm going to look in front of me. You're the longest. I don't know what Buffalo did. We're seeing you. I'm having a crew. Open up here. Ladies and gentlemen, the cafe car will be closing for station work at Buffalo. Once again, the cafe car will be closing for station work at Buffalo and will reopen upon leaving Buffalo. Once again, the cafe car will be closed and will reopen upon leaving Buffalo. Thank you. I'm not sure which river we just crossed back there. The map is not clear. It's either the Cayuga River or the um, Cazenovia River. doesn't matter how much I zoom in on my GPS, it doesn't tell me, but I'm trying to figure that out from my road atlas. 
So we are rolling into downtown Buffalo here. And it'll be a station stop to the point where we can get off the train for a little bit. the train doesn't actually stop in Buffalo proper. It looks like it's uh, in some outlying community. Because as far as I can tell we've passed out of Buffalo or at least quite a ways away from the downtown part of it. That's the kind of stuff you don't hear about at all if you don't have a scanner. The CSX dispatcher noticed some anomaly relating to signals. I couldn't quite figure out the details of it and ordered the Amtrak train to come to the quickest safe stop and then they check things out got permission to proceed. station for the Buffalo area is Buffalo Depew. And I don't think we're quite there yet. <clears throat> oh, we are.
So as can be seen here, our sleeper car is the one immediately behind the baggage car, which is right behind the two locomotives. And the other sleeper cars are at the opposite end of the train, which is something I haven't encountered before. Anyway, they were like, why are you going up there? There's nothing up there. It's like, well, my sleeper yeah, car is up there. I still have my suitcase jammed up against the sliding door here. I have to keep re-wedging this towel in there. I'm trying to keep the door from rattling. It's been mostly fairly effective, but it doesn't stay that way for very long. Outbound conductor, Yeah, we're all done up here. Roger, you guys are all set. Thank you.
changed at some point or uh, if they're just doing that for short. We're going through a town that I can't tell what it is. It's uh, Batavia. State, western part of it. Batavia is here, halfway between Buffalo and Rochester. We're pretty close to um, I-90.
we're just uh, now at 10:34 uh, a.m. Uh, south of the town of North Chile, New York State. About to cross another highway. So at 10.42 a.m., we're pulling into the outskirts of Rochester. Well, there was a great big quarry with a bridge over it that looked very picturesque and I didn't see it coming until it was too late. So this is the Rochester, New York station. At 10.53 in the morning, we're pulling out of the Rochester station. Ladies and gentlemen, about an hour and 15 minutes, our next station stop is Syracuse. Syracuse, about an hour and 15 minutes. Those of you that are just going to Albany, of course, you your lunch is included, so if you want to head back to the sleeper lounge now, you can do that. For those of you traveling on through to Massachusetts, we're going to be doing something a little different. This is the first time we've had the conference all together the way it was about three or four months ago. So what I'll have to do this afternoon, I will have to get your dinner orders so I can give that to Pierre. Pierre will have to deliver them to the cafe car and then I will have to deliver them to the rooms once we depart Albany. I do want you to keep that in mind. Of course, if you're hungry, you can have lunch now and dinner then, but dinner's going to be a little bit early due to the fact that we won't have that car. We do have to make sure that we get everybody's orders so we can, here, can bring that to the cafe, and I can deliver them to you a little bit after we depart Albany. So please keep that in mind when you have lunch, of course, you can have lunch have dinner, that's up to you. And again, passengers traveling in through to Albany, you're more than welcome to go back for lunch now if you'd like. Thank you. Heading to lunch.
So at 12.30 in the afternoon, we've gone through Syracuse, which happened while I went to, went, went to lunch, and now we're heading on our way to Utica. We just passed uh, the little town of Manoa, which is right here, so we have to go this distance yet to get to Utica, and then come down this way to Albany. One thing I didn't mention about this train was in a way that's similar to the Empire Builder. Uh, the train is combined as one train heading from Chicago and then in the case of the Empire Builder when it gets to Spokane, Washington it's split into two trains, one half of which goes to Portland, Oregon, and the other half which goes to Seattle, Washington. Mile post two eight zero point zero. Track one. No defect. No defect. Total axle six zero. Speed four eight ten of transmission. This train heading east from Chicago gets to Albany and there it is split into two trains one half of which goes to Boston and the other half of which goes to New York City um, apparently until just about a week ago uh, and for quite a while I think a lot of the summer anyway the train was not operating that way because there was a bridge there was a bridge out uh, on the route going to New York so the train only went to Boston and people who wanted to get to New York had to disembark in Albany, <clears throat> I believe, and then they, I don't know if they ran buses or something to get them down to New York. There was some alternate, maybe they changed to a different train or maybe they went to Boston and then came down from there to New York, I'm not sure, but it was some alternate way of doing it than the way it's supposed to be. Scenery-wise, this trip has been pretty disappointing. Um, there are brief moments of nice scenery, but by and large, the tracks are just surrounded by a bordering row of trees on either side. And um, Just when I think that there's not going to be an opening on this side, I'll look out like I do right now. <coughs> find a little lake. But it's not too feasible to monitor both sides of the track simultaneously. So I wouldn't recommend this route as one to take for the scenery. And I kind of knew that about it anyway. Um, just from various reviews I've read that a lot of these uh, routes, although they go through basically scenic country, the tracks aren't laid out in ways that have very good vantage points for the majority of the trip. You know, contrast that with the, the big western trains, for example, the Empire Builder, the Southwest Chief, and of course the California Zephyr, um, which it seems like they almost laid the tracks out deliberately so you get a lot of great scenery. And, um, and of course the Cardinal, which is one that I've used before, and I have a video on it, is a good way to get from Chicago to the uh, eastern cities, such as DC and New York City and so on and it takes a little longer but um, it's still the tail end of one day and a good chunk of the day most of the day the second day um, 
to do the trip and it's you know once it gets down into uh, Cincinnati in that area then it's scenic pretty much the whole way for the rest of the trip so um, that remains my preferred way of getting uh, out east if I do want to take a train I only really took this one because I wanted to get to Albany in particular and this would seem like the best choice there's a lot of people on this particular train staying in the sleeper cars who are from either Australia or England I'm not sure which it sounds more like to me like it's Australia at 12:44, this is the town of Canastota At 12.53, we're just on the outskirts of Verona, and about ready to cross I-90 here. State Highway 31. At 109, we're just leaving the town of Oriscani, which is right here. We've been coming on the north side of 90 since shortly after Syracuse. And we're about ready to come into Utica. And um, this blue line here is the uh, famous Erie Canal. I'm not sure if we're going to come close enough to it to see it though. It'd be nice if there was a bridge over it or something. And at uh, 112 we're into Utica. Clear to me, uh, we'll be working both ends of number six here at Utica. We'll let you know when's good. Just about ready to cross I-790, which is a, a bypass for I-90.
stop coming up, Utica. Next station stop is Utica. All doors will now open in Utica. Next station stop is Utica. Next station stop is Utica. Coming into Utica. Adirondack Scenic Railroad. Somehow it looks defunct. I wonder if they're actually still doing something with that. at uh, 119, we're going to pull out of Utica Station. Just had the train horns a few seconds ago, and we're moving. The reason I question the Adirondack Scenic Railroad is just that it's all just overgrown with weeds around everything, and it Looks like the paint is flaking off a lot of the cars, which makes me wonder if they're if they've actually touched these things in quite a while. ready to come fairly close to the Erie Canal. Maybe we'll get a glimpse of it. It looks like we are going to cross it here, so hopefully we'll get a good look. Nope, so much 
for that. Went over a set of locks. And now it looks like it's gonna be on the right side. So I'll cross over and see if we can spot it there. Just like right over there, just beyond the trees. Well, there it is. But I've got too much uh, dirt on the window. sure which one. doesn't show another waterway in this area except for the Erie Canal but this looks like a natural river here not a canal so I'm not sure unless they co-opted a bit of a natural river as part of the canal for, for a ways which I suppose is possible. But since the canal I think originally used mule teams to pull the river boats along, or the canal boats, a natural river that's winding around doesn't seem like it would lend itself to that, so I'm not thinking that was part of the canal. the uh, 
little river there, whatever it is. we just passed that was on the river it was called Little Falls. Little Falls. I still haven't figured out what the name of that river is. The uh, river we've been following is the Mohawk River. And we're up close to it again here. Unfortunately it's on this side, the sun's hitting us, and with the dirt on the window, it's kind of hard to see much. So the Mohawk River again. scenery is mostly like this even though we're right next to the Mohawk River I can't get very good shots of it I wish Amtrak would do a better job of cleaning their windows on the outside the window here isn't any dirtier but it's or less dirty but the Sun isn't coming in through this side so the dirt more or less disappears in the video, but over on the right side of the train it's really hard to get an angle that doesn't show the dirt a lot. This is the town of Nelliston. This is the town of Palatine Bridge. State Highway 5 on the left. A lot of buildings that look like they need maintenance. 
Hill and Fort Johnston. we're getting kind of close to where I'm going to be getting off. I'm going to be folding up some of my equipment so I can make a quick getaway when they announce the station. It wouldn't be like all my other trips where I ride till the last station and there's not a huge rush to get off. Here they're not... I don't know how long a station stop they'll have. It might be fairly long, but I don't want to put it to the test. At 2.26 in the afternoon, we're coming into Schenectady, right there. And then the next stop will be Albany, which is where I'm getting off. So I'm going to have to start packing stuff up now. So here at uh, 234, we're in Schenectady. construction in the station. It's now uh, 2.42 in the afternoon and um, this is approximately the time when the train should have gotten into Albany. So I think it's made up a lot of time from its earlier apparent lateness. Having just recently left Schenectady Here's the blue dot showing where we are. I've had to transition to my phone GPS display instead of the one that I usually use because it's packed away. 
and we're only going down here to Albany, so it's not going to take that long before we get there. And I'm all packed, ready to walk off the train when we get there. Yeah, in short, I think that this uh, Lakeshore Limited train is more the kind of train you take to get from point A to point B than one you take for the scenery. It rhymes. suitcase over here there's nothing putting pressure against it to uh, to calm it down I'm not sure if that door would have always done that or some you know rubber damper on it's worn out or something it shouldn't series of highway interchanges just before the river, which by the way is the Hudson River. So that's part of the elevated clover leaf. And this is uh, US Highway 9 that we just passed under in one of its ramps. Now the ground is going to slope downhill into the Hudson River Valley.
Rensselaer. Ladies and gentlemen, this next station stop coming up momentarily will be Albany. Albany Rensselaer is next. For all you smokers, this will be the last and final opportunity for you to step off the train for a cigarette. If you don't smoke, you step off the train for a breath of fresh air. Here in Albany, we change engines. This is Interstate 787 we just Alexis. passed under. This train also splits here in Albany, Rensselaer. Front two coaches, front cafe, and the front sleeper goes to Boston. The rear four coaches and the rear two sleepers go to New York City's Penn Station. We're not scheduled to depart Albany Rensselaer until 3.45 p.m. Once again, we are not scheduled to depart Albany Rensselaer until 3.45 p.m. Also in Albany Rensselaer, there will be no power while they're changing engines, which means that the restrooms will not operate in Albany Rensselaer. However, if you have to use the restrooms while you're, while you're waiting in Albany Rensselaer and while there is no power, you're more than welcome to go upstairs in the station State, the Albany Rensselaer station has restrooms. They also have a coffee and snack shop if you'd like. You're more than welcome to go upstairs in the station. Just please, ladies and gentlemen, try to be back by at least 3.40, because this train will leave at 3.45 with or without you. Once again, Albany Rensselaer is the next station stop. This will be the last opportunity for you to step off the train for a breath of fresh air. If you're a cigarette smoker, this will be the last opportunity for you to step off for a cigarette. The restrooms will not op operate in Albany Rensselaer due to the fact that we lose power. We change engines from diesel to electric. This process takes about 20 minutes. Once again, this is an Amtrak standard procedure. If you have to use the restrooms while there's no power, you're more than welcome to go upstairs in the station. The Albany Rensselaer station also has coffee and snack shop upstairs in the station as well. Albany Rensselaer is next. Albany Rensselaer, now arriving at Albany. This should be it right here. And attention, uh, coach attendants and any sleeper attendants. We will be stopping uh, just outside the platform here in Albany to water one of the rear sleepers. Please do not let anybody off the uh, train in Albany here. Uh, so, so, okay, thank you. Hello. If you're going to Boston, don't go far, don't go upstairs. You can stretch your legs, get some air, but this train will leave when it is ready to leave. We are technically supposed to leave at 3.05. It may or may not happen. Probably not gonna happen. But do not go upstairs if you are continuing to go to Boston, Massachusetts, anything past Albany, if you're going between Albany and Boston, do not go far, do not go upstairs. Train will leave with without you if you went upstairs. The New York attendants forgot about us already. We're still here, New York attendants, going to Boston. Well, train's not going to New York. Okay, I'm all confused now. Once again, if you are going anywhere between Albany and Boston, do not go far. The train will leave before the New York section of the train leaves. Do not go far if you are going to Boston. We don't want to leave you behind. We love you. old Pullman cars there. The height of luxury in their days. Looks like they're in pretty good shape too, like they're using them for something.
pulling in to get right at 258. Probably by the time we stop, it'll be three o'clock on the money. Looks like the rental cars are right here. Couldn't be more convenient. <laughs> 